here we go. We just arrived. Getting ready for first impressions of St. Jude's. We actually came from the hospital about an hour ago. We drove straight here, so we're fresh We came from off. the airport. Wait, sorry. We did not come from the hospital. Yeah, we're gonna, sorry. That would be weird. We came here straight from the airport about an hour ago, so we just drove straight over. And our first stop in Memphis at all is actually to tour the hospital. Yeah. So we're going to take a tour of all the main facilities here today. And tomorrow we're gonna to be talking to a whole bunch of people who work and stay and care for patients here. Yeah, so come on, let's go together. Miguel, can you help us? Please, please help us. This is Danny Thomas, who Danny Thomas is the founder of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Danny's dream was that no child should die in the dome of life. And for that, we're going to open a facility where everybody's going to be welcome, regardless of their walks of life, their career, their religion, or their ability to pay. My name is Miguel, and I am a former patient of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And now I work for the hospital. My family and I discovered that I suffer from a type of tumor, and there was nothing that they could do back in my home country, the Dominican Republic. And finally, this public hospital, when we went in, the doctor said, let me make a phone call for you. And the next day she called us back and said, you have been accepted at San Diego Children's Research Hospital. You don't have to pay for that $250,000 chemotherapy, for that $70,000 surgery. I thought that people coming here, everything was paid for, like when they were here. But we're talking four days after the diagnosis, he's getting a plane ticket paid for to, to be here. Guarantee I'm gonna wind up crying before the end of today. <laughs> My dad, as soon as we were talking to the doctor, he was like, okay, where are I gonna stay? I had to pay for a hotel while I'm staying here. They were like, no, 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 no. We have a place for you to stay. And he really is a home away from home. This is just a fun fact. Then he told me himself, he didn't want no statue of himself. He didn't want nothing. He didn't want no building name after him. Well then, what you doing, <laughs> guys? <laughs> You've heard of the Goodyear blimp. St. Jude's got you one better. The Great Year blimp. I love how none of the walls are blank. Like, no, no wall through our whole tour so far has been blank because that's the, sort of the stereotype of hospital walls. That is precisely the type of vibe that you want to give to somebody that is sick. You don't want to remind them that they're sick and that they're in a place. But here, St. Judy makes you feel fine. It makes you feel good. Tell me about your your um, chaplain time. Back then, St. Jude was a much smaller place, and so the Nintendo lived in our chaplain's office. So I joked that I was very religious when I was going through my treatment, not just <laughs> because I got to go play duck hunt. So <laughs> I feel like I'm in a Nicktoon. That's like great. Rocco, I feel like I'm walking down the street in Rocco's modern life. Yeah. We were able to continue our education while we were patients at St. Jude, and that meant so much for me because they're hoping and planning for a life after cancer by investing in my education. How many people come from outside the U.S. to be treated here? Oh, wow. We call it the United Nations because these are patients and families from all over the world and we'll come and, and play pool and we'll do rounds and play video games. I used to use my crutches as, as a pool stick. Does it matter if they can speak English at all? It does not matter wow. at all. Not only we have a team of about six five interpreters on site yeah. that can help with translation, but we yeah. also have blue phones all over the place in which we can call any interpreter for any language. Blue so phones? We can communicate. There are these blue phones that you can just pick up, you can get whatever language you need translated, and then you can translate in real time with the doctor on one end and you on another handset on another end, and a translator going in between. They think of yeah, everything. <laughs> so as you see here, all of these red wagons, right? Really? Yeah. They're for the kids. <laughs> it shows that this is a clean wagon. You take it and you can go to wherever. It sure beats a wheelchair, right? There are so many different ways that St. Jude makes sure to just care for all of you. It's definitely about finding cures, saving children. But it's also about ensuring that we have a quality of life both while we're here and then when we go home. <laughs> They unplugged it because they saw you coming. <laughs> <laughs>
So Steph and I are having a little bit of a debate about what's the coolest part of St. Jude. I mean, it's all It's incredible. a pretty dorky debate, to I'm, be I'm the emotional one. <laughs> Stephanie's like, the, yeah, science one. I'm like, no, I'm counting data. One of the things that just blew my mind was the fact that they don't like hold on or have like proprietary knowledge. As soon as they learn something about a treatment for a specific cancer or a protocol that you can use for treatment, it immediately gets disseminated out so that way other people can start using it and helping to save lives. Science doesn't work that way because everybody's fighting over grant money, everybody's fighting for the next patent, to have the next billion dollar drug, and the idea that you just share information for the sake of sharing it because it saves lives is incredibly special. Any person in the world can go to PubMed and find a research that's published by a St. Jude researcher. Not only that, any of the clinical trials that are undergoing, there are dedicated websites so that any pediatrician anywhere in the world can go online and share that data. Because everything is here on campus and you have the researchers, you have the people who are able to synthesize the medicines, the patients then where it can be administered, and then you can t learn from that and iterate. You're able to get medicine faster and more efficiently at a fraction of the time that it takes to traditional medicine. We want to support charities that not only are helping to treat people, but are helping to solve the core problems that underlie those issues, right? And St. Jude is doing that. They're doing the research and they're learning things and they're empowering other researchers and other scientists with the knowledge that they have to continue learning and expanding and building upon that knowledge. You don't keep life-saving information to yourself. You give it to other people so that they can save lives too. So not only the kids are being safe here, one kid safe here actually means thousands around the world, and you cannot even quantify it. We have a saying that if you rub his nose, it brings you luck. <gasps> Please, don't make statues of me. But busts, totally fine. Busts, bust for days. How much do you think Katie Couric had to raise in order to get her own waiting room here. Bring it on, Katie Couric. Challenge accepted. The game theorist waiting room. Matt Pat chair. We're gonna hope for a paperweight. True to form, we are horrendously behind schedule oh, on our tour. We're way off track. Oh, now we're talking. This looks this delicious. <laughs> now, now we found the place. I was... <laughs> so there's pizza and the salad. Ooh, ice cream. What? Ice cream, cookies, Diet Coke, done. The incredible thing about this, though, is again, Miguel told us that because kids' taste buds are getting changed based on their treatment, they can request whatever they want. So we've learned that this Miguel's is Miguel's favorite, favorite item. It yeah. is called the Hello Dolly. Not, not the Dolly part, part but which, easy to confuse. Which personally I have a, a bigger preference for since I was in Hello Dolly. Oh. Mm -hmm. you, you can do it. You can do it. It's okay. It's okay. Mm. Oh, it's like coconut and pecans and stuff. Ooh. It's really good. It's a little nutty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little nutty, a little coconutty. When Danny Thomas founded the institution, it was that there should be a single localized cafeteria, right? So that patients, clinicians, and researchers all sat together, ate together, did everything. When you get to see your doctors every day, even just going to the cafeteria, you see, ha! Ah! Just like when you were a kid and you thought that your teacher might leave at school, but you're also the person that I get to encounter with you and talk to you and grow with you. Sorry, I have a, I have a mouthful of a hot dog mommy. Yeah, I know. It's good. The thing I look at now is, you know, in this, this world of turmoil, what can be some unifying factors? That's what you support when you support St. Jude. You know, those opportunities for patients like us who wouldn't be alive today without St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. That is how the money is being used. There's not a penny that is wasted. It's not going to somebody's pocket. It's going to these families that need it the most, to that research, to save lives, to find cures and save children. St. Jude doesn't just stop there. It's not just worrying about the cancer that's present that comes in the clinic today. It's looking out into the future. But, but hey, hey, that's just, just, it's just, it's just, it's just a truth.
I thought you watched. I thought you watched every episode of the show. It's just, it's just, Get out. That's it's his not, translation. It's over. Hey guys, we're actually here to talk about a big event that's coming up on our channel. That's right. On December third, we have a huge charity live stream that's all going to benefit St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Now, if you don't know what St. Jude is or what they stand for, basically it's a hospital that's dedicated to treating children diagnosed with cancer or other life-threatening diseases. They accept patients from all over the world, and no patient or their family ever receives a bill. They never get billed for treatment, housing, or food because a family should only be focused on making sure their child gets better. And if that goal alone wasn't noble enough, it's also a hospital that's dedicated to researching cures for cancer. One patient treated at St. Jude actually helps a thousand patients around the world because St. Jude shares all of their research, all of their discoveries with doctors, and they're constantly training people everywhere so that kids, no matter where they live, can get the best treatment possible. So yes, St. Jude is a hospital that's located in Memphis, Tennessee, but it's really an organization that's helping to find cures for cancer around the world. So we hope that you'll be able to join us December 3rd for our big charity live stream to help raise money for St. Jude and all the good work that they're doing. That being said, you don't have to wait to donate. You should see a blue button somewhere around here. I'm being told behind the camera it's either here or below if you're watching this on mobile. Click that button to donate and help St. Jude with all the good works that they're doing, treating children with cancer and helping to forward cancer research around the world.